Hi again guys and welcome to episode 32 of Days Gone By, the review series for Gran Turismo's classic and also some vintage cars, though not that many. Hopefully that will be rectified in the future of Gran Turismo, here's hoping anyway. But this particular vehicle is, as far as classics go, and moving kind of into vintage territory back in the 50s, is a very strong classic slash vintage car. This is the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Racer concept. And this is a brilliant car. Not just as a classic, but just as a car in general on Gran Turismo for one way in particular. And that is straight line performance. Now that's not all this car is good at, but it is probably its best point. The top end performance and top speed in particular on this car is almost unbeatable as far as classics go, especially for its power. Now, this vehicle is powered by a 4.9 litre superchargeable V8. It produces a pretty decent 664 horsepower, fully tuned, and 583 foot pounds of torque. Now, it's not as light as you might think. It looks like maybe a sub 1000 kilo car, but it actually weighs 1150 kilos. That being said, Although the weight doesn't sound that impressive, and neither does the power, really. 664 is a lot of power, but not necessarily as much as you'd expect from an older American vehicle. But it's what this car can do with those specs that make it so good. Because this car can do over 280 miles per hour without NOS, without slipstream, on a flat road. And that's very difficult to beat. There are very few vehicles with less than 700 horsepower, especially older vehicles, that even come close to that. And understandably, you do see this car used a lot in racing lobbies where older cars are favoured. Now, the car has a price tag of half a million credits, which is a fair price, but at the same time, it's a premium, classic, exotic vehicle slash race car. So, it's not too surprising that it does cost a fair amount. But, if I remember correctly, you can actually win this car, I think, in career mode, if I recall correctly, which means that potentially the value on this vehicle is pretty good, to say the least, considering you can get it for free. Now, the PP, when fully tuned, is 572, and that's another really good point about this car, because not just for classics, but also for its PP level. The top speed is among the best you can get, and for its top speed, as I said, primarily, this vehicle is one of the best cars you can get for that specific thing. Now, of course, it can be beaten by cars with more power, even in the classic and vintage categories. The Auto Union Streamliner, the Ford GT40, and various others can do more than that kind of speed, but they also have quite a lot more power than this one more often than not. So overall, although as a track car, it's not necessarily bad, but it's definitely not a vehicle that I'd recommend as a first choice due to the fact that it is a little tail happy. And in particular, it has a handling characteristic which quite a few older cars, especially cars from before the 60s, used to have. And that is, it likes to float around a lot. It has steering which is almost boat-like. It feels like it's not really planted on the road properly and, as I said, tends to float around the track. And that can be on the straights, in corners, etc. And it's not due to it not having enough weight or the tyres not being good enough. It's primarily just due to the aerodynamics and lack of downforce which cars had back then. So, unless you can change that, which we can't on the game, you can't fit it, for instance, with a larger rear wing or a flat floor, that's not really something that you can solve. However, you can improve it, you can work with it, and it does make a good track car. It's just not a vehicle that I would recommend as a first choice of track car. For straight line performance, especially top end, it's almost the best you can get. But around the track, especially twisty ones, don't go for this one first. As a collector's piece, it makes a nice car, and overall, it's a vehicle which there's no reason why you shouldn't own one, because, as I said, you can win it. So that being the case, I would definitely try and attain this car, if at all possible, for your driving skill level. So overall, it's a fairly simple review for this vehicle, because it's just a good car. 
very strong in one particular way, not necessarily as strong around the track as you'd like, especially from a racing-inspired vehicle, but it more than makes up for it with straight-line performance. So overall, that's it for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.